Right, good evening. How are we doing? It is day one live, some awesome, awesome work today. Getting in the workouts, getting in some of the uh, workouts twice for some of you. If you're coming in, give me a hello. If you're on replay, drop a replay below. I'm just going to let a few people in. If you're coming in, give me a hello and drop a one in the comments. Drop a one in the comments if you can hear me okay. <clears throat> so drop a one in the comments if you can hear me okay. And then let me know your biggest take home from today so far. Your biggest take home from today so far with the awareness, the self-awareness wheel, seeing where you're at right now. And also the world's most easiest workout on paper, which uh, is a lot harder than you would expect, right? Hey Louise, hey Tanya, if you're coming in, give me a hello. If you're on replay, drop a replay as well and let me know any questions you have. We've got some great questions uh, already that we have in. So I'm just going to invite a few people in. So, how are we doing, Sarah? Good evening. Right. Let's rock and roll. So, da, 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 da. Let's have a look. okay. How are we doing, Sue? If you're coming in, give me a hello. If you're on replay, drop a replay as well, of course. So I'm going to get the questions up. If you do have any questions, by the way, do let me know uh, as well. That's absolutely fine. So uh, perfect. Thanks, Sarah. How are we doing, Louise? Kathy, awesome. Feeling motivated. Perfect. How are we doing, Debbie? Good evening. I'm going to get all the questions up now. And if you do have any questions tonight, do feel free to put them below um, as well. So uh, let's get these questions up as we've got, a, we've got some, a fair few. So we should be wrapped up by about midnight tonight. So just joking, not that long, but we have got some good questions. So um, let's rock and roll. And by the way, um, some great tones from the, the task today. Um, when I read the comments, it's always good to see the different angles. And I'll be honest, sometimes I, I actually learn quite a lot. Right? Sometimes I do actually think that some people take um, different things from it and get a bit of aha moments. Like, like and tasks to do straight from that. How are we doing, Jane? Um, and from the sabotage to being aware of sessions missed, which is which is sometimes good to do. Like, it's just taking a breath, isn't it? And I think when you take a breath and just go, okay, where am I at with my food right now? And sometimes we just need to go back. Like, and the good thing is, is say you were doing something quite well and then maybe you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm actually struggling a bit. You can just ask the question, what was I doing three months ago when I was doing really well? I was doing that, wasn't I? I was, I used to get on, on the bike in the morning and just, just do that. I used to walk to work all the time. I used to have the same breakfast every day. And that really worked for me. Can I go back to that? And, and sometimes it's really simple. And sometimes we're looking at all these crazy fad diets where we're checking blood sugar levels of any, everything we eat and thinking that that's the right way to go. But sometimes we just need to take a breath and actually go back to what we already know works. Um, perfect. And, you know, looking at where we can improve, like there is a reason we talk about food fitness focus. So I know one of you was like, my food's good. My focus is horrendous. And it's, and it's interesting, like, because if your focus is low, how's your energy going to be? No wonder your fitness is low. If your focus is low, because you're not protecting your energy or creating your energy. Are you getting outside? Are you not? Are you planning your meals? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm blaming time and not prioritizing this. But really... Are we just not valuing it? AK, we're doing something else instead. And that's something important to consider sometimes. If it's not important to you, why is it not important to you? Five years from now, what happens if you don't make this in priority? What happens to our mobility? What happens to our joints? What happens to our gut health? What happens to our recovery? Like, this is important. So, anyway, let's get on with the questions. How are we doing, Jill? So, Sue, um, I have been lax sessions. So, which are the best to choose to get strength back up again? 
Good question. So what I would say with that, Sue, follow this five day kickstart. This will get you straight in. Now, Sue's actually on the kickstart. You might have seen uh, Sue's actually in our um, program as well. You might have seen Sue's transformation, actually, which is which is amazing. But in terms of getting that strength back up, if you've been lax, start at the start again. Go back to what you know, like, like I said already, and build that up. Once you, I think a good place to start would obviously be the sessions every day um, today. So follow the kickstart this week. If you've been lax with sessions, the last thing sometimes you want to do is go straight in and almost be like, oh my God, that was just too much for me. Take it day by day on here. These are, these are staggered, so slowly we increase. So go with that, too, is what I would suggest. Uh, Tanya, is there a best time to exercise to get the best results? And would exercising before bed aid or hinder sleeping well? It's a good question, Tanya. And actually, uh, you may have seen, we, we went to a conference, actually, a Fruity Fit team last week. And it was, it was a bit on uh, your biological clock, if you like, how we all have biological clocks and things like exercise, blue light, watching TV, watching Q&As with, like this now late at night when it's getting a bit dark lights on might disrupt that a little bit now um in in a nutshell the best time to exercise basically despite all the research all the hypothesis is any time you can physically get it in exercise is so beneficial that when you get it in is like the fact like just getting it in is more important if you had all the time in the world and you were you were looking for that one percent and you were like I need to get in for best result. I'll generally say it depends on on you as a your job and your lifestyle, really. But obviously, if you do it first thing in the morning, the benefit is not many people want you then. As in, apart from your bed, not many people are going to be like oh, Tanya. Can I, you got, can I have a favour to ask at five a.m., six a.m., or whatever, um, seven a.m. even. Not many people are after a favour. Not many people are. Like, oh, you don't really get that many emails at that time. So generally, you're less likely to put it off. The longer the day goes on, the willpower drains a bit, things get up, you've had a busy day, you, you, there's the opportunity for you to blame stress. And this is where maybe we need to shift our mindset and go, even if I'm stressed, even if I'm tired, even if I have a rubbish day, I will get my workout rather than, well, what if I'm stressed? What if I don't have time? What if I can't do this? Even if I can't do this, even if I'm stressed, I will still do this. How are we doing, Penny? Now, the good thing about obviously exercising later in the day, and, and some of you may feel this, is if you have joint issues or maybe even arthritis, then that side of things, you may, not everyone here, so don't think, oh, I've got arthritis, I'll exercise in the evening. You may notice that maybe your joints feel a bit better later on in the day. Maybe you're aching a little bit better, more or uh, less, sorry. So, that might be something that you want to consider. But in general, get the workout in. That's the main thing. It doesn't matter when, just that you get it in. Um, could it aid or hinder sleep? That is kind of personal preference a little bit. And another reason to exercise in the evening for some people is if you if you struggle with comfort eating, sometimes actually, hey Jules, how are we doing? Actually exercising in the evening can help because you're doing something else and a lot of comfort eating can actually sometimes stem from being bored, for example. So that could be an option for you there. Um, and as a result of that, you might sleep better because we've all been there when we've overeaten and we're feeling sluggish, we're feeling tired. Um, sometimes you can't sleep as much, maybe you get indigestion, maybe IBS, maybe your stomach's not feeling great and all of a sudden you can't actually go to sleep then gas, flatulence, etc. So um, there is that as well that might. So it's difficult to say whether exercise will aid or hinder. It does depend on, on you um, as well. And also when you have caffeine, right? So you might read something and go, yes, have caffeine before you exercise. This can help um, with your energy levels, it can help with pain threshold. But then you might go, great, okay. But then if I do it in the evening, I've still got caffeine floating around my bloodstream and and therefore I might not um, get to sleep so well. I hope that helps. Okay, Ella, do you have any tips to help maintain 
consistency? That's a good question. And that is the key. And what I would say of consistency is you've got to look at one, what you are doing. So if you are struggling to be consistent to something, why is that? Is it that the thing doesn't fit your lifestyle? Is it that you're being, is being consistent not good enough for you? And I say that because sometimes we think we've got to be consistent to being all, to being everything, to being that all versus nothing kind of thing. And actually, if we're consistent to something that actually fits our lifestyle, but we are truly consistent, maybe it's that 80-20 rule here. You're probably going to get better results over time than if you are trying to be consistent to being perfect. But then when you are not perfect, you just think, well, I'm not being consistent, so I might as well be rubbish and really rubbish. That's an important thing to consider. Because a lot of times when I speak to people, they're not consistent at being perfect. So they think they're not being consistent. Little do they know that if you were just consistent at being a little bit less than perfect, or even quite a bit less than perfect, but just not perfect and then nothing, that all or nothing, actually you'd get significant results. And it's like when people say, oh, I've just got so much things to change. I don't know where to start. It's like, great, you've got so much to change. Just start with one thing. We know from research, for example, as we'll go over tomorrow, the nutrition side of things, the world's most simple nutrition plan and done for you meal plans to, to help you think differently, but not saying you have to follow them. Even getting protein in at breakfast subconsciously lowers food intake. Okay. If you can be consistent with this, regardless of the rest of your day, to an extent, we know over time, the power and the habit of getting breakfast, um, getting protein in at your first meal of the day. I don't care where and when it is, but your first meal of the day, let's get some good solid protein in there, whether that's yogurt, whether that's eggs, something like that, a protein shake, whatever. Just citing research here. Over the day, do it for one day, you might see barely any difference. Maybe some noticeable difference in your hunger. You do it for 12 weeks, three months, a year. You start to then see difference. And you've only just been consistent to one thing that was seemingly pointless. And sometimes it's about being consistent to the seemingly pointless things. Like stopping at four biscuits instead of finishing the packet of 10. Like doing 10 minute workout when you couldn't get the half an hour workout in. Like doing a shoulder workout because your legs are really hurting or your knees aren't up to it today. Like going for a walk because you can't get technology to work and you couldn't do the home workout that you set out to do. Like me today, couldn't get my normal workout in today, but I did my best today. Did I do my best today? That's a question. And if you can do that, Ella and everyone, you'll be more consistent to being pretty good, that's enough to get significant results. And like we say in our in our Kickstart book, um, which we do inside our one-to-ones at the start, on the opening page, it actually says, losing just 5% of your starting weight lowers your cholesterol, reduces your risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, may even improve your sleep and energy levels. Those who focus on Losing the next 5% succeeded in 97% of cases. People who focused on losing more only succeeded 40% of the time. What that's saying is, yes, you can aim to lose loads and that's fine. You can still be very successful. But focusing on the first step and just being consistent with that is the key thing first. I actually had a one-to-one with someone today and there was loads of things we could have changed. In fact, I'm, I'm, we're doing a lecture actually on, on Wednesday at Oxford Brooks University, all about habit change and nutrition to um, second year psychology and, and nutrition undergraduate students. And one of the, I'm going to use this example. I could have said a million things to change. But you know what? To actually get significant results right now, 
I also want to see what happens if they just add some protein in at breakfast for this for a week and get two exercise sessions in. Two resistance exercise sessions in plus adding protein in. What difference could that make? I would hedge that if you're consistent with that, you're going to get better results than being perfect for a day, like following a meal plan for a day. But I can do that, can do that, can do that, can do that. Now I'm beating myself up because I didn't get the workout in every day. I'm not exercising four times a day. I want to see what happens to our mood, our mindset. Doing that, and that's why I would recommend. Hey, Ali, how are we doing? So I hope that helps on being maintaining consistency. So. Uh, Melissa, I'd love to know how to add more protein to lunches. I have soup or salad, depending on the season, with fruit. Also, how do you know what the recommended amount of protein is in terms of what you need to eat? Also, any energy generating tips for perimenopause? Would love to know what is best for nutritional energy boost. Thanks. Cool. Good question. So let's start with protein to lunch. So if you're having things like soup, salad, like having that with some meat or some I like so meat on top of a soup, say, or making sure the soup maybe is from lentils, pulses is going to be a good way to increase your protein. Um, in terms of salad, very similar, whereas eggs, meats, lean meats, simple ways to increase your protein. Free bean salad mix are great, like literally you can get some in vinaigrette as well, which make like a base of it as well. It's quite low calorie in terms of any sauces you're using as well. So I'd recommend that. Um, in terms of some sauces, you you can even make like um, Greek yogurt as a bit of a base for some sauces um, and some dips in there. Uh, no worries, Annie. That's all good. So in terms of the recommended amount of protein, this depends if you're counting calories or not. So tomorrow when we go over the nutrition side of things, you've got a few different options here. You could, if you're just using simply a bit of a there or thereabouts guide, which like I said, if you can be consistent to this, you're probably going to get great results. Like a hand-sized portion of protein with every meal, you're probably going to do pretty well. One to two, if depending on you as well, you're probably going to do fine. Hey, Sarah. If, however, you were tracking calories, if you wanted a bit more specifics with numbers, Take your body weight in kilograms, times it by at least 1.2, and try and aim for around that number, see where you're at. If your hunger level is pretty good at that level, go with that. If your hunger level is not great, can you add some more vegetables in, fiber in? If it's still, you're struggling with hunger, try and increase it towards more 1.5 grams per kilogram. So if you weighed 100 kilograms, that would be like having at least 120 grams of protein a day, okay? Which is which is quite quite a lot. Um, and one way to increase your protein is even to if say you have a soup or salad, you could even have a protein shake as a snack later on, um, or as a pudding if you like. It's good for the sweet tooth as well. Um, with your fruit as well, if if you're just having a salad and you don't really eat much like meat or anything with it, and you're having fruit, could you have some Greek yogurt with it to increase the protein as well? That's an option. Um, in terms of energy generating tips for perimenopause, I'd say there's not really too much difference in terms of creating um, energy, whether you're perimenopause or not. But I know there was a question about let me, medic, uh, like supplements. So what I would say with perimenopause and you might have seen the talk I gave about this, but there there are a few supplements that I would maybe suggest looking at. One being iron. Um, if you know, I mean, if you consider menstrual cycle, if you consider blood loss, then it seems like iron is a is a go go to to definitely take. Um, it is a bit dependent on on how much someone has and also their diet. It seems like um, non-heme iron is, is generally not as good. So non-heme will be from sources like greens and spinach and things like that, whereas heme iron 
is from say meat which is better absorbed but there are things you can do so if you don't eat meat or red meat or anything like that when you eat your greens make sure you have some vitamin c with it and avoid tea and coffee around those times okay um then things like calcium vitamin d in terms of supplements um around that is going to help uh can potentially help especially vitamin d in terms of energy as well um you could look at magnesium and um, you can get that dietary dairy beans pulses dark leafy greens cocoa nuts avocado um that that would be as you know, maybe omega free and, and soy um as well in terms of supplements that you could recommend but soy also in terms of um potentially kind of um some of the symptoms associated uh with pms as well um everything from so this is just from research cramps swelling um breast tenderness all reduced with uh, premenstrual he headache as well uh, all reduced with soy soy intake so that could be soy protein that could be soy yogurt um, and similarly in terms of um, menopause as well like hot flushes soy seems to be potentially have some benefits there as well uh, you then got creatine as well which is if you look at we're touching more menopause now um, and post menopause but if you look at some of the biggest impact is loss of strength uh loss of like with if you correlate lack of estrogen um and strength can be this could potentially be offset by one resistance exercise like the exercise we're adding in really focusing on that muscle but also two creatine can potentially help with this as well there's numerous studies that are starting to show this and at the very least you're probably gonna get some cognitive benefits um from creatine as well so um yeah i hope that helps to go on a, on a bit of a tangent there but in terms of energy boosting it's, it's a very energy generating tip so i would say don't be afraid to have a nap in the day get outside 100 percent. if you're not taking vitamin d take vitamin d um unless you're getting outside for 20 30 minutes at least a day in the sunshine in like shorts t-shirt take vitamin d um up to 4000 iu no more um, would be my recommendation in terms of energy but getting outside is going to be so key um with that as well we need that that sends a lot a lot more signals than you can think like i'm in this room now it seems light but the lux the light measurement coming from that is a lot lower than what i would get if i was outside in daylight right now and that impacts my hormones, my, my body's ability to create certain hormones that make me awake or tired or sleepy. So that's key. So even if you're at your laptop, you think you're looking at light, yes, it's, it's potentially enough to put you off going to sleep at night. But in the day, if you're, if you're not facing a window, little things like that, that can potentially make a bit of a difference. But trying to get outside is so important for your energy as well. So um, I hope that helps Melissa on that. And I think... I did also uh, answer your questions, uh, Caroline, about vitamin supplements you can take for perimenopause. Um, as my metabolism since turning 40 is like a slug. Um, and that brings me on to Nikki's question. Why is it more difficult to lose weight when you get older? Well, there's many reasons. There's a lot of kind of um lifestyle reasons generally you have more responsibility as you age whether that's kids and or parents to look after you've obviously got things like work as well um, and you throw all that in there's a lot more responsibilities on your behalf and that can take up time that can take up mental space you then throw in perimenopause menopause postmenopause, and the symptoms around sleeping you then throw in what happens when you lack sleep you can your hunger levels could be raised you might perceive foods as more rewarding than they actually are and the result of that is that you potentially eat more or you be tempted to more cravings you then throw in the obesogenic environment we live in where food is very easily available and relatively cheap cake coffee with constantly being thrown at you go to someone's house 
biscuit, coffee, tea, you go to a supermarket, one pound deals, one pound deals, 50p there, da da da. It's very easy to buy processed foods everywhere. And they're easy to grab, they're long lasting, you can get them on the go, even if you're busy, eating out, etc. So you throw all this in, and it's probably no wonder that it's a bit harder than potentially it was years ago, sometimes for environment reasons. It's easier to buy processed foods than ever. And a little bit for, you know, our metabolism slows down a little bit as we, as we get older, but not as much as you would actually think. And there's lots of studies to show this. Things that we need to do are to remain as active as we can. I know that sounds obvious, but getting your steps up as much as you can, getting little snacks aside throughout the day, movement, whether that's punching if you can't go outside, like little hits of punching, so, so important. Getting the little 10 minute workouts like we're doing this weekend. Can you get them done again later on if you can? So, so important. Don't underestimate, underestimate that. Um, we probably are more sedentary than we ever have been. We probably walk a lot less than we ever have been. If you think about all the things that make our life more convenient, they also make us quite often less active, whether that's from washing machines to dishwashers, to online food shops, to car parks, to escalators, to elevators, you name it. A lot of things that make it to blenders. Yeah, yeah. do we, we are a lot less active. Um, and doing things like resistance exercise is great because the thing I love about it is even if you have injuries, you can always adapt it and do something else instead. One. Number two, it helps with also bone density. Number three, you're burning calories long after. Number four, it doesn't wipe you out to the extent that you feel really hungry, that you feel you need to reward yourself. This is something that I actually did my own research in at university about compensation. So if you don't eat a lot um, one day, do you overeat the next day? Or if you do high intensity exercise, do you then go, oh, I'm so tired, I now deserve to eat X, Y, and Z. And there is an element of that. There is a bit of you know, personal um, preference with that. But generally, um, if people perceive a workout as very hard, they, they actually overshoot how many calories they've burned, which can sometimes mean that they compensate to the extent that they offset the calories burned. So there was one study where they made people burn 200 calories or so, it was something like this. It was either way, it was about double the calories in one compared to the other. And then they let people kind of eat afterwards. And people who burnt more calories essentially just ate, ended up eating more. And it was about whether, how good exercise is for calorie control, etc. cetera. And, and exercise is generally very good in terms of helping with hunger um, and just generally calorie, but the intensity of the workout can be quite key as well. So if you're completely wiped out, you might then walk less later in the day, you might not move as much, you might not bother taking the dog for a walk, and all of a sudden these are starting to add in. The brilliant thing about resistance exercise, like what we did, you could do it and add it into your routine. So everything stays stable, plus the workout. So um, I hope that makes sense on there. So is it more difficult to lose weight when you get older? Yes and no. Um, physiologically, a little bit. Psychologically and lifestyle related, yeah, I would say it definitely is. But um, the key thing is to be as active as you can. Try and keep that protein up as much as you can. You know, be really get those basics right. And you know, think about sleep, getting outside, protein, lots of vegetables. These are the key thing. So at least physiologically, you're ticking the boxes in that. Um, I hope that helps on that. Next question, is full fat yogurt better than low fat yogurt? And this is an interesting question that I had today that I thought I'd cover on here. So the question actually came from, I like a lot of cheese. I do as well. This wasn't me saying it though. I like cheese. I shouldn't have much cheese. That was something they said. Okay. I said, okay, potentially it's your overall calories that count. And then they said, oh yeah, I could add yogurt at breakfast, but I know I should have the full fat, shouldn't I? 
not the low fat because that's full of sugar. So I should get full fat Greek yogurt rather than no fat Greek yogurt. Is that right? And I was like, okay, if you like cheese, there's fat in cheese that's coming from the dairy. There's also fat in Greek yogurt that's coming from the yogurt. If you're getting Greek yogurt, just natural yogurt, you take the fat out, they just add more milk in. That's it. There's nothing else added but milk. If you take the fat out and you're okay with that, you've then got a bit of cheese fat. You've got a bit of fat to play with, which means you could probably have a bit more cheese later for the same amount of calories. Your body doesn't really know the difference. It's coming from dairy. It's the same fat. That gives you a bit more flexibility throughout the day. So rather than having Greek yogurt full fat and cheese later, which means you might overshoot your calories, you've taken the fat away from the Greek yogurt without adding any sugar in. If anything, you've just increased your protein because low fat Greek yogurt will be higher in protein because there's more milk in it. And they skim away the fat rather than add sugar in. And you've now got caloric space for cheese. And that is how you can eat cheese without feeling guilty. Um, so it's about those small changes. And then another one on this, which I thought was a really good example. And I'm always, you know, people often ask, how do you get so many ideas and questions? It's because I get asked questions and we have conversations all the time with our with clients and people coming in, inquiring. And one of the things they they said were, so I can't really have like, like my latte and a chocolate bar as my snack. And I was like, well, you can do. But what you could do is have an Americano, a white coffee and a chocolate bar. And you've essentially like halved your calories and still eating the chocolate bar. And that that's quite a significant difference. And it was like, yeah, actually, yeah. And, and you know, when you look at people who often say, you know, I eat the same as X, Y, and Z and, I just look at a cake and it, and the weight comes on. Whereas someone else, they're like, they they can just eat what they want. And you, you look at the little changes like that, and there's actually sometimes quite a significant difference. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, Sandra, any advice if you haven't exercised for some time and you pull muscles easily? Yes, start with the sessions we did today and go very gentle. Aim to get through the workout, not to beast the workout and be the best workout. Get through it injury free. If you can stay injury free, like we said to Ella, in terms of maintaining consistency, if you can stay injury free, you'll get better results. 100%. It's consistent what you do on average that counts, not what you do once in a blue moon. Anyone can have a great day, but can you just have an average day when you would normally have a rubbish day? If you can make your rubbish days okay, that's how you'll get results. Um, I hope that helps, Sandra. Who's just come in now? Hey, Sandra. Hey, Caroline. Uh, when are you having a When you're having a difficult time, how do you stop throwing everything to the wind when it feels like you simply can't do anything that you have learned? Start today. Just do it for today. Do it now. The only thing that exists is right now. Don't worry about how long you're going to do it for. Don't worry about what you did before. Set expectations for today. Today I will do this workout. That's it. That's all I'm setting myself today. No more. Do that. Build confidence again. You only get confidence from evidence. Set your expectations, even if they're lower than what they have been in your life at some point. Meet them and then move forward from there. So uh, that is all the questions that I've had. Um, any more questions? Any other questions on tonight? What's your biggest take home from today, this week? If you're on replay, uh, it's only day one, of course, but um, yes, we are ready to rock. So any other questions at all? Any other questions? I'll just take a sip of my sparkling water in a wine glass. So any other questions? Hope that was helpful. Um, keep those questions coming. Tomorrow we talk all about nutrition. The world's most simple nutrition plan. We'll be going over dumb few meal plans. We'll be going over strategies if you're vegan, vegetarian, uh, if you eat meat. So if you, a bit like we've touched on today as well in terms of iron, um, the vitamin C technique as well. Great, Sarah. Awesome. Brilliant, Sandra. Thank you for your questions. Brilliant. 
Um, so tomorrow morning, remember, 6 a.m. for the workout, 6 a.m. for the task. Remember, you, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it at 6 a.m. You have to do it at 5 a.m. Just joking. Tanya, does it taste better from the wine glass? Yes. So sparkling water. If you drink sparkling water from a wine glass, it definitely tastes better. My brain thinks I'm having, like, I, I will say, oh, so, so I did have sparkling water from a can the other day. That was even better. I felt like, yeah, it was something bit, yeah, there was something about that. That felt, that felt good. Like the sound of opening a can, maybe that was reliving the childhood of um, cans from a vending machine. Yeah, I do always say that I'm, I'm pretty sure that when I was, we were like the generation of let's see how much junk food you can give a generation. Yeah, junk food was everywhere. I look at some of the pictures from when I was at birthday parties and um, yeah, amazing. There's not a diet drinking sight, but there's just full sugar foods, beige foods everywhere, processed foods everywhere. Um, diet lemonade and gin glass, perfect. Anyway. It's, and it's all about, it's not being perfect. It's all about what's the alternative. Like someone might go, oh, you should, should you have diet coke? Or well, what would you normally have? Coke. Well, I'm pretty sure sugar is killing more people than a little bit of sweetener. And if you're saving 100 calories per glass, you do that twice a day. That's uh, 200, 1400 odd calories a week. That could be contributing to half a pound of fat loss a week. You throw that over a year, that's 20 pounds gone. I'm pretty sure that that excess body fat would be causing more harm than than the drink. So it's all about those small changes sometimes. Yep, day one. Awesome, Jane. Awesome, Penny. Perfect. So have a lovely evening and I will see you soon.